two big earthquakes in the last couple of weeks. One, the one that was just to the southeast of Mexico City, that was a 7.1. But a couple weeks before that, we had the 8.1 earthquake. I worked with Russian scientists in the mid-1990s, and what we developed were systems for leading them offshore. And this information was given to the U.S. military because Russia really doesn't have a problem with hurricanes. We do. Here we go again, guys. Another man-made geoengineered storm. And knowing that the government, uh, the bankers, have the ability to knock these things out with their weaponry, their electromagnetic weaponry, but they're not. They're going to feed it. Barbuda, which has already been destroyed, you know, half of the population there is homeless. But Barbuda is bracing for Hurricane Jose. They're remotely controlling it with heart. Hurricane Irma and Jose are basically man-made with this technology that I'm about to show you. Basically, these are frequency weapons, so to speak, or weather modification technology off the west coast of Africa. How actually do they form? Well, believe it or not, a hurricane is sort of like a bowling ball. They form off the coast of Africa as a small breeze, and then they gather energy as they go toward warm water across the Atlantic. Agenda, while he lets everybody on the ground do the work that they are well equipped to do, you know, it, it's an obvious man-made, I mean, not, not man-made, natural, incredible disaster that Texas is dealing with. And so the federal... There is geoengineering. There is weather manipulation. There is the weaponization of weather. There is everything. It's admitted. It's known. There's evidence of it. It's on the internet. The Air Force has uh, gotten great value out of ARP in the past. We, uh, we took over from the Navy and managed it and actually did a number of uh, experiment campaigns up there and uh, have finished our, our work that we we're interested in doing up there. Now we're learning that scientists and researchers are looking at how to change the weather on purpose. That's right. Lasers now manipulate rain and lightning. CBS This Morning contributor Michio Kaku is a physics professor at City College. I came across the issue of geoengineering. There's substantial evidence that these programs are going on currently, not only from the testimonies you're hearing today, but from doctors, scientists, and activists around the world. And you know what they're doing now? They have set up a checkpoint at the bottom of this bridge. This is the bridge that takes you from New Orleans over into Gretna. It's the only way out. They've set up a checkpoint, and anyone who walks up out of that city now is turned around. What does Raytheon, big oil companies, uh, Bill Gates, the CIA, and uh, the Jason Group have in common? Well, uh, all of those groups are involved in thinking about and researching geoengineering. We've uh, moving on to other ways of uh, managing the ionosphere, which the HARP was really designed to do, was to inject energy into the ionosphere, be able to actually control it. And, uh, but that work is, has been completed. Lasers? Really? To change the weather? That's right. Well, as Mark Twain once famously said, everyone complains about the weather, but no one ever does anything about it. U.S. military, we knew that they had militarized this information in the early 2000s. They sent up three large satellites. They said they were for communications. We knew that, that they were laser satellites, and they have been using these to manipulate storms. The government has patents on this stuff. These are a show of force by the banking system, and there's many, many agendas of why they're doing this. You know, the agenda, this is where all the oil rigs are. It's tracing the coastline like la a laser beam. We finally have the top scientist astrophysicist in the world, Michio Kaku, is telling us that yes, these hurricanes are the result of a weather uh, modification program. We have more islands. You can totally see the same kind of frequencies coming out out of these islands. And you can see these frequencies coming out of them because they have this technology there. And then if it comes in just right, It'll get a strike. It'll go into the Gulf of Mexico, get energized by the warm water, or it could be a gutter ball and simply veer off in the direction, a wrong direction. You can look out on the horizon, look up in the air and see streaks and trails of what obvious is not water vapor. Well, instead of doing a rain dance, we physicists are firing trillion watt lasers into the sky to actually precipitate rain clouds and actually bring down lightning bolts. This is potentially a game changer. This is a global issue. A 
quote from the U.S. Air Force document reads, in 2025, U.S. aerospace forces can own the weather by capitalizing on emerging technologies. You are not allowed to go to Gretna, Louisiana from New Orleans, Louisiana. Look in the face of the baby. This is it. This is it. No sugar coating, no political spin, no Republicans with Democrats, people suffering. Let them go. Bill Gates, for example, is investing in a number of geoengineering companies and projects. He's backing scientists doing that kind of work. Uh, the security state is taking a close interest in it. Uh, they're carrying out inquiries. And uh, the way they do this are hurricanes. We first have to dispel this myth that hurricanes are somehow crea uh, created and maintained by warm water. Totally incorrect. The hurricanes are powered by electrical currents from the ionosphere. Now, I told you when um, Harvey hit, they were going to raise gas prices. We already have a gas increase already, about 35 cents right now, than it, when it was before the storm. The skies are sprayed with nanoparticles. You might as well have said chemtrails because they're the same thing, delivery systems for nano dust. They're spraying the skies with nanoparticle. This technology, you can zoom out a little bit, is creating these spindles, so to speak, right? You can totally see all of these and all of these. And they will say, those are contrails. Those are from jets. Where? Cross-hatched jets? What are you talking about? These seeds can also be created by laser beams. By firing trillion watt lasers, you rip apart the electrons, create what are called ions, and these ions act like seeds, like dust particles, bringing down rain and even lightning. There are also doctors like David Keith, Alan Robach, and Ken Caldera, all trying to convince the American people that these climate engineering programs are a good thing to help fight global warming. When confronted, they deny these programs as good. They began talking about, uh, for example, a sulfate aerosol shield that would, would reflect some some sunlight back into the atmosphere and cool the planet. A very, you know, it sounds like crazy science fiction, but in fact it's a very serious proposal getting a lot of work. The government issued a warning stating that because of the warm waters of the Gulf of Mexico, this hurricane season, which goes on till the end of November, could be one of the worst in memory. So watch out, there could be more monster hurricanes to come. Using weather as a weapon. American scientists fear the country's intelligence service might be looking for ways to control the climate. We don't know if it's possible to create a cloud in the stratosphere or to brighten clouds out over the ocean, the two ideas that people are looking at. But be that difficult, we don't know. Uh, I don't know what motivates the CIA. I guess they want to protect the United States, but uh, we don't can't think of any way that you could control the climate of one part of the world without controlling the whole the whole world. Uh, putting clouds in the stratosphere would have a global effect, not a local effect, and so uh, it's hard to think of a way it could actually be weaponized. But maybe they want to think about that. I don't know. Geoengineering is weather modification on a global scale. Many refer to this as chemtrails. The dispute as to whether or not these programs are going on is really a moot point. We have more than enough data. We have actual footage. As you're seeing now to show that these tankers are indeed spraying at altitude, the materials we see showing up in the ground are the exact materials named in numerous geoengineering patents, as many as 150 patents. So at this point, the, the notion that these programs are not going on is, is simply uh, denial. Skies like this, many have grown to think are natural, but they're anything but. And we've seen this for so long now, and it's been ramped up at, at such a steady pace that people have simply become used to skies like this. Anybody who thinks grid patterns like this are natural should recheck their reality. This is anything but natural. We, we seldom see blue skies anymore. Skies like this have all too often become the norm. Unfortunately, most people don't even look up. I think at times you could start the sky and fire, nobody would notice. It's exactly what geoengineering patents call for, solar obscuration to block the sun with toxic metal particulates. And unfortunately with geoengineers, they don't seem to take the consequences into account. They're, yep, the planet is like a giant physics lab for them, and they, they seem to not be able to look outside that bubble. These are 
And this is uh, halos around the sun. We see often as the atmosphere is filled with particulates, it's important to understand just because you don't see trails from horizon to horizon does not mean you're not breathing particulates. We seldom see blue skies anymore. They're, they're a, a uh, silvery white color, especially in the mornings or the afternoons. If you look to the east or to the west and you block the sun with something, you can see the air is very silvery white. This is indicative of an atmosphere saturated with particulates. These particulates create drought. This is a very known and not disputed effect of geoengineering. As you saturate the atmosphere with particulates, you diminish rain. Need, people need to get this through their head. This is not about seeding to increase rain. This is about creating artificial clouds, which reduces rain. When you block the sun, you block evaporation. You block light photons, which uh, diminishes uh, the, the ability for the sun to knock molecules loose and create evac evaporation. So, what we get is protracted drought in some areas and deluge in others, exactly what we have in the continental U.S. right now. Putting the wrench on planet Earth, this is the epitome of human insanity, to think that they could alter and control these very complex natural systems is insanity of the first order. Weather as a force multiplier, a term I mentioned a minute ago, owning the weather in 2025. This is a stated U.S. military objective, to own the weather in 2025, and I do not mean to imply that the U.S. military is the only player in this game. We have China and Russia on the other end of the fence, and at this point, it's a tug of war with the atmosphere, and the American public appears to be one of the victims in, in this uh, equation, and it appears that there are other internal objectives against the American people to control food supplies, control water supplies, control water rights, so forth.